All right, so you guys may remember this one right here. Well, guess what? This has been completely scrapped and updated, so check it out right here. It says, check out the updated image for Season 1. Season 1 will now have two updates, one on August 29th and the next one on October 10th, when, of course, Ultimate Freyna will now release. A lot of you guys hated the fact that Ultimate Freyna was releasing so late, but yeah, the updated schedule is right here. August 29th, we're going to be getting, of course, Dungeon Invasion. The Ascendant Haley. We're going to be getting Inversion Reinforcement and then Season 1 Battle Pass and more. October 10th, we will be seeing Void Intercept Battle, Ultimate Weapon, External Components, Descendants, Exclusive Spawn, and then Ultimate Freyna, a Hard Mode Infiltration, Modification Modules, Ultimate Module, and much more. This is such an excellent change and they are actually listening to the community. In fact, they had a new blog post which they released right here. It says, Season 1 Update Schedule Adjustment. It says, Greetings, Descendant. This is the first Senate producer. First, I would like to thank all Descendants for enjoying the game. Recently, I've noticed that many of you are concerned about our current update schedule for Season 1, and as a result, we decide to readjust it. To make a long story short, we've decided to move up our updated schedule for October 30th to October 10th. The previous schedule was initially planned to provide consistent updates every month before each content release. However, I have to admit that I failed to fully meet your expectations. So rather than splitting into three partial updates, season one will be divided into two updates, one on August excuse me, 29th and the other on October 10th. Along with the above change, we have also begun examining the update methods for the upcoming seasons in the future. In order to do so, our previous third update for season one will be merged to the second update, which as mentioned above, will take place on October 10th. Now, currently the dev team is working on continuous updates and hot fixes. Since our official launch, we are taking various measures and methods such as reorganizing the development process and even actively recruiting additional personnel. We'll do our best to prepare better updates that will make you satisfied. Thank you. So they know time is of the essence with a lot of this stuff. That drip feeding content is just not going to do it. A lot of you guys referred to Destiny 2 and how that sort of killed that game. And yeah, it just does not work with this sort of game. And it's great to see that this dev team is willing to adjust so very quickly. So yeah, this is excellent news. And you got to remember the fiasco that has been Helldivers 2. Check it out. It says, Helldivers 2, what you like sucks. We're taking it away. The first Ascendant, your inconvenience has brought shame on our ancestors. We must atone. It sure feels like that. And it says, I've never witnessed a developer literally fight against success as hard as Helldivers 2 has. But, you know, the first Ascendant, it seems like this dev team knows. They just know they have something very special here and they don't want to screw it up. In fact, they're willing to go out and, like they said, it looks like they're willing to hire even more personnel to help them meet deadlines very, very quickly because they know with this sort of game, with live service, it is going to be extremely important that they adjust and update very, very quickly that this game is going to be living or dying based off its updates and frequency of those updates. So yeah, it is extremely important. So I'm just super impressed right now with how they continue to handle this game. And again, once again, it's like the sun has come out and there's hope. It's a brand new day. So yeah, that's how it is with the first Ascendant. And that's one of the reasons why I am sticking with this game. Now also, I want to get into some more feedback that you guys have because this team is willing to listen. It seems like they're also probably backlogging some things that you guys are saying. So I say we continue talking about it. So check it out. It says, running should be the default walking on keyboard. So annoying. And uh, we have some people saying always run period being on controller is very frustrating for this. So yeah, this is one minor quality of life change that I think they should commit to and I think would improve the game big time. But also this one right here, people are talking about it. Drone escort missions need to be redesigned to not need shields. I don't understand why they need shields in the first place. I get some of the concepts behind this that it powers up the drone, but I still find it kind of like ugh, a little bit frustrating. So a lot of you guys want to see this change. And then Glamain, we don't have that problem. So yeah, it might be one of those things where they want you to, of course, mess around with different descendants. We've seen that type of mechanic in the game where it encourages you to go from descendant to descendant. That could be what they're going for here, but it seems like most of you are pretty annoyed by this needing shields. Oh yeah, we also got to talk about Greg. So check it out here. It says Greg's reversed 
they maxed in game build. I'm going to throw this in the description for you all. I know a lot of you guys love Greg's reverse fate. So yeah, check this out. This will be super helpful for you guys, especially when we head into season one. And we're going to talk about this one as well. Next on a quest about the upcoming build diversity feature. So it says, please, please, please do not require us to spend even more crystallization catalysts in order to make extra builds on our descendants you are already requiring 11 catalyzed slots in order to create a maxed out build even if the original two catalyzed slots on the descendants are usable with our build that is 400 levels to grind that is 67.5 hours to research that much investment into a character should be enough to make as many builds on that descendant as we want please just let us change what the catalyst slot is on the other build screens as someone who is enjoying the game and wanting to make multiple builds on all my descendants, I'm begging you. Yeah, so the community is absolutely begging right now for the first descendant dev team to listen. Will they make the change? We'll have to wait and see. I think this one would take a little bit more time for them to implement. At the same time, this is not a paid, you know, paid upfront game, $70 game. It is a free to play game. So. <laughs> They are going to try to make you spend some sort of money, try to get you to, you know, do something, take some sort of shortcut. So we'll see. Now it says, yeah, the re-leveling is painful. And another reply, seriously, I've got 11 descendants, a few of which are ultimate versions of characters I've already leveled before. Three of those are finished. They're fully polarized and inflexible, except Valby, she's flexible thanks to the build I got on the sub. In any case, there's about 100 hours of just level grinding for three effing characters. I'll be going back to WF for a few days. That's Warframe. They have new stuff coming out in a few hours, and I need a break from bashing my head against the first Ascendant bosses. So yeah, there might be another reason why the player count might be a little bit shaky is the new Warframe content. I don't know. Is that the new 1999 stuff? Maybe I'll, I need to peek into Warframe. Damn. But anyway, yeah, uh, this is fantastic news overall for the first Ascendant. But yeah, we also have this. J-Bear is a S-tier in leveling and farming. Don't believe those YouTubers telling you who and not to play. Just pick your fave and have fun. And he posted this little snippet here showing how absolutely a beast J-Bear can be, as you can see, just standing there, standing around, doing some calculated kills. So this is one... Uh, build. I wish he would have the exact build up. Maybe I'll find it for you guys and throw in the description as well. But I'll reply here. I mean, there are very good reasons why he's deservedly a bottom tier character. One of them, among everything, is the fact that dungeons and intercepts don't just exist in one spot for you to constantly spawn camp. That being said, I've already invested in EA and four catalysts into him, and I'll keep going. Just stop with these. He's S tier, actually. Crap. <laughs> it's not helpful when he deserves to receive improvement. Some people are like, not good enough man listen he definitely still needs those buffs those tweaks those balance adjustments which uh, again you know with season one we are going to be seeing some actual improvements to some of the you know less used descendants so that's good news again they're willing to change up the characters to buff them not to hardcore nerf them so yeah i only expect the descendants that are underperforming right now to actually improve season over season so that's at least the good news right there all right, so now it's time to go over your top comments. Remember, leave a comment right here because it may have a chance to end up in a future video. So let's do this. All right, so comment number one is no game is free to play. Your time is the most valuable thing you own. Yes, that's how they kind of calculate it, isn't it? They want you to feel that way for sure. Now it says people complaining about no ultimate frame at day one, but we just got ultimate Valby, so I understand it. And it gives mid-season hype for people to log back in. So yeah, that's changed. We don't have enough to worry about it anymore now. But some people kept uh, giving their opinion here. It says, hot take. They're rolling it out in stages so they can add extra adjustments during each major patch if necessary. And if the community doesn't like something from update one, they can refine it for the release alongside current promise update two items listed already. You know, I really do think that they will still do some level of you know like mid-season updates like you're saying like hot fixes that sort of thing patch adjustments which they should uh but they shouldn't drip feed content so intensely i think it's such a big mistake now someone had a hot take here it says here's my hot take they're releasing the update in increments to give more room for improvements 
They're releasing Haley first to give grinders enough time to grind, uh, to get Haley before Ultimate Freyna is released. You know what? Just a pause here. That's exactly what I was thinking. I think they wanted to put a highlight on Haley. I don't think they expected so many people to have their feathers ruffled here uh, and, you know, want Ultimate Freyna so badly. But the case is, I think a lot of people are e equally excited for Ultimate Freyna as much as Haley. And I don't think they really anticipated that. You know what I mean? Uh, also, we have this. Let's continue. It says the following. I'm still grinding for Valby. I haven't been lucky enough to get her enhanced cells, which is all I needed. They're releasing Ultimate Freyna with Freyna's backstory the day before Halloween on purpose. Based on the trailer, Freyna's backstory is going to contain horror elements, which is perfect for Halloween. I think everyone is acting a bit entitled and wanting everything available right away, only to complain that there isn't enough content halfway through the season. That's how current games like COD and Halo fell apart quickly. Yeah, you know, you're not wrong. And the dev team has realized that. And I think that they're realizing, hey, you know what? Our fan base is fast moving. They like things updated consistently, new content all the time. We might have to hire new personnel to stay, you know, to stay competitive. Because there's so many games that are updating consistently. I mean, hell, look at Fortnite, how much they do new content updates. This is like a whole new world we're living in. And we'll see if uh, the First Senate can keep pace in this brand new live service world. We'll see what happens. But yeah, they are definitely adjusting and doing things and listening and not just ignoring you guys, which is fantastic to see. But there it is, the latest happenings around the First Ascendant. If I missed your comment, uh, hopefully I can get to it uh, down the road. But uh, yeah, you know, YouTube is weird with arranging comments. So yeah, let me know if I kind of missed out on like a top comment. But thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned here for more of the First Ascendant news and updates. I have you guys covered and I will see you all next time. Take care.